This is part one of a video series, how to create value with AI. I've talked with a lot of my business friends, MBAs and executives, and it's hard to read past the hype and everything else that's going on with the AI movement right now. And, you know, is it hype? Uh, it definitely is not hype. I've been in the weeds with a lot of my best friend technologists, the super nerds. Uh, you can see this trend occurring with all of kind of the classic founders that were, were all jumping on on this wave. So my goal for this series is I know some brilliant people that just need a good grounding on how you could potentially create value with these technologies. So I'm gonna break this down from a first principles perspective of each one of these videos. This part one is gonna be around summarization. So what I'm looking at is like, what's the core capabilities of this techn technology so that you know the capability and then you know where you can put it into your business. So the first one is summarization. And summarization is the ability for the AI to read through language, pull out the meaning from that language. That's one of the big breakthroughs right now is that the, the, these language models can pull out meaning from a chunk of, of content and actually extract that meaning and condense that meaning into a, a small set of numbers called a vector. Don't worry about that at this, at this particular point as far as the math. Just know, have a mental model that the AI can look at a large amount of text and condense it down to its essence. And that core capability of the language models enables you to pull out the essence from longer text and summarize. What is the power of summarization? I've been meditating on this. And to me, summarization is all about making better decisions faster. And I have a couple of use cases and where the value of summarization is. It's probably a no-brainer on where the value of summarization is, but as a working session here, I'm gonna highlight some of the things that actually the AI called out as far as the value prop and then talk through some industry examples. And I wanna show you behind the scenes on how the API works for the GPT-4 language model that you could actually incorporate these capabilities into your own line of business. So you can also do this in ChatGPT as well. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is a little bit more behind the scenes just because I wanna get in, get in, I wanna show you what's possible to potentially inject into your own business processes. So what ChatGPT gave me for some outputs on here, which I completely agree with that I wordsmith for for LinkedIn, what are the key value creation dimensions for summarization? So decision-making support, uh, summaries highlight key findings or key results from large reports or data sets, enabling quicker and more informed decision-making. 100% agree with that. You know, as busy executives, I run a, soft, a software services firm where we're doing this AI work and, and modernizing IT legacy old systems that nobody wants to touch. Uh, when my when my team comes to me, I want you know the key points. I want the key takeaway so that I can move fast and and make decisions and unblock people and and provide the the value that I can to my team. So decision making support uh, that's a big one. Information overload with summaries. Users can quickly grasp the main points without having to read or process everything. Now that's big. We know that we're just inundated with with information constantly. So having a technology that gets to the essence quickly is a big a big enabler for how how efficient that you can be and people in your own organization. Uh, from there, let's see here: efficiency and time savings. So summarization saves time by providing the most important information in a condensed form. That's continuous. That's continuing to be the theme of this. All right, so the next one here is improved retention and understanding. Summaries can help improve understanding and retention of information by focusing on the key points. Think of them as your go-to sound bites. That's huge, right? Like what are the key takeaways, your note cards, how much do you use that in, in your life and learning is pulling together the essence, the key facts, and going over that that list, the, the key highlights, the sound bites. The sound bites are also what travels through an organization, right? So. I have a, an executive friend who said, give me the sound bites, or that's a sound bite, you know, because those sound bites travel as well, right? Like they're not only useful for ourselves, but they're useful in stories that get told around the organization. So that, that 
retention and understanding is actually a key point as well. Give me the give me something I can remember. Give me something that I can that I can put into a box in my brain and hold on to that that sound bite. I don't know why it works, but it works. Um, accessibility. Now this is a big one. Summarization can make complex or lengthy documents more accessible to a wider audience. Example, research papers and content from tech teams. I throw in the content from tech teams myself because being a technologist, I know that technology teams are usually horrible, horrible communicators. Uh, personally, on a personal level, I think that that's why I was able to make, to lift just a hair above the uh, standard technologists is that I was at least able to communicate somewhat better than a, than a horrible communicator, <laughs> right? So people who are in the weeds, they sometimes can't pull themselves out and give you an accessible, an accessible takeaway, right? So a lot of a lot of research teams and everything else are down into the science and the weed and falling in love with that, with our our craft, which I love, right? I'm I'm embedded, spending all of my time in AI lately. Uh, so that accessibility point to take things that are difficult to understand or take things that have a domain of a business, a business line, and make it understandable across different functions. That's a big deal. All right, so I'm going to show you some examples of this in a second. But let's see what the AI gave us for our industry examples on what potential things. Legal. Summarizations can condense lengthy legal documents, court judgments or case files, aiding legal professionals in quickly identifying the main points of a case or legal text. Uh, law is one of the one of the areas that is getting absolutely I don't want to say disrupted because I think a lot of us technologists can go to that very quickly. But that is an area, if you think about the input and output of law, in many circumstances it is ripe for transformation at a very minimum, right? It, it's text in. So these language models are very good at text in on condensing information summarization, what we're talking about and giving key takeaways. We'll I'll talk about reasoning in another one of these in another one of these these breakout sessions and then generating content. So legal's legal's a huge place for for summarization. Finance summaries can provide briefs of financial reports, market research, or economic analysis, helping investors, financial analysts, and other stakeholders quickly grasp key points and make informed decisions. All right, the healthcare summarization can generate concise versions of medical research papers, clinical trial reports, or patient health records, assisting healthcare professionals in staying up to date with the latest research or quickly understanding a patient's medical history. The last point is something that we're active on right now, uh, looking over a patient's profile and summarizing patient profile. You can see that in, in Epic's definitely doing some things in there, there right now. There's a lot of movement in, in giving you the key takeaways from patients. That is, in all of these high risk use cases, there's definitely some care that needs to be done because the models can hallucinate and get things wrong. But the potential huge upside is, is, is there. So the next one is customer service and customer service settings. Summarization can quickly condense customer complaints, feedback or queries, aiding representatives in understanding the issue and providing a swift res resolution. When Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, was asked on the Lex Friedman show what industries he thought would be disrupted, customer service was the one that he called out. If you think about the activities of, of customer service, looking at someone, yeah, it, we all have the experience. If you were able to get a key takeaway, if the representative is able to get who I am, what my problems are, everything in a quick soundbite that they could take away how powerful that is that from a customer happiness and a in you know from a net promoter score type of as uh the spirit of something like that how much more satisfied would customers be if the company truly understood the essence of a customer so that's a big one government and public administration summarization could provide briefs of policy documents that's going to have to be huge uh I'm going to bite my tongue on an idea that someone brought to me just so that I don't share something that they might actually work on. Legislative text or public feedback on policy proposals, helping officials understand the main points of policy or identify common themes in public feedback. 
It's huge. All right, marketing PR, this is the last one, and I'm going to jump into a demo. Marketing PR, summarization can generate briefs of market research, customer feedback, or social media posts. The is this assists in marketing professionals in understanding the market trends, customer sentiment, or public response to a campaign. So this is interesting. There's a ton that's going to happen in marketing. I talked to a huge thought leader the other day in marketing. I'll hold it back his name at, at this moment. But if you <laughs> look through some of the people that I've interviewed in the past, you probably could figure it out. And is absolutely amped up. I mean, they're building the marketing is going to be completely transformed by this technology. Uh, me personally, we're doing, I have an Amazon product that, that serves the $40 billion Amazon advertising market, and we're using GPT's ability to reason over advertising data and, and make recommendations and optimize advertising campaigns. Uh, that's something I'm personally doing. But this is about, this is sessions about summarization. So you could almost consider that a summarization, looking over vast amounts of data and then giving you the essence. So I guess it, it fits into this session. But marketing is going to be a, is a huge one to how do you take this understanding of the market and get boiled down the essence, right? So that, those are some examples, I'm sure, in your own business that you can think of many, many scenarios where there's a lot of information. And if give me the key takeaways, how powerful would that be? All right. So let me show you some of the te technical things behind the scenes here on how some of this kind of stuff potentially works and the limitations and some things to think about. So first, these sessions are meant to be for business leaders. So I want to talk about the value that AI can bring and to help you imagine what you can do. But I'm going to go into the weeds a little bit so you have some context. I don't. You can always rewind on these videos or anything else, but I want you to have a, at least a thought of how this stuff works. And, you know, if some of it's over your head, don't worry. It's no big deal. All right, so let's... And we're all learning, by the way. I, I know some of the best technologists in the world, and we're basically drinking from the fire hose on this every day. Everyone's inventing. So, all right. So what I have here is Azure's OpenAI Playground. And let me just get a screen out of the way here. Uh, what this is, is basically kind of behind, you can kind of think about it as behind the scenes chat GBT. Uh, OpenAI also has the same, the same thing in, in, in their, their backend. This is the OpenAI model in Azure. Okay. And what this is, is it is what we do for our customers is in Microsoft Azure, they're, it's HIPAA compliant. It has, other network security boundaries, private data, and so forth. So some things that we do for our customers. So we're, we've been early, early into this. So how do you summarize something? Okay, so what I'm doing here in the open AI, uh, in this playground here, is I'm setting up my AI basically as an IRS tax chatbot. Now, you don't have this option in, in ChatGBT. This is called a system message. I'll just dive into this briefly. Uh, what this does is basically ascribe a persona on the AI. You are this expert. You will act this way. You won't hallucinate. You won't do these things. And it's a way to steer the AI in a certain direction. So in this case, I'm going to show you an IRS tax bot. And if you think about the tax code, it's very complicated, everything else. Now, there are limitations to summarization, okay? So I'm gonna say, I am going to provide some examples of tax law, and I would like you to summarize uh, the key takeaways. Now I'm in, GPT 30, I'm going to use GPT 4, the base model. I'll talk about 32K in a second because I want to show you a limitation of how this, of this stuff as well. All right. All right. So basically it says here, I'll do my best to uh, be happy to help you with summarizing your key takeaways from law examples. Please provide the examples you'd like me to review and I'll do my best to provide concise summaries. Okay. So I'm going to go to some documentation on the R&D tax credit. And I'm going to pop this in. Let's see if this is too much text. That I'm going to pop just a, this first. This might be too much text to begin with. And that's going to be one of the limitations that I show you. And I'll talk about how we can overcome that. So let's pop this in. All right. So this gave me the key takeaways from just that paragraph. Now, the tax law is going to be more than that. Key takeaways from the tax law. 
Uh, qualified research must be the process of experimentation or related to new improved function, performance, reliability. Okay, so this gave me five takeaways. And what I can do here, so this is a big, pretty big chunk of text. I could say, um, please give me the top takeaways in a short single paragraph. All right, so you can imagine this internal system if you wanted to show a, an overview. So there we go. It condenses down, down to a paragraph. So, you know, think about the customer service example before the, uh, what were some of the other ones that we had in here? Customer service, finance, healthcare, patient profiles, and everything like, like that. If you got if you got in and you had a, a short couple sentences to read to give you a concise takeaway, that would be very powerful. All right. So there is a limitation to this in the base model. Okay, so I chose GPT-4. It has what's called an 8,000 uh, token context window, and that's the length of text that you can put in and that you can get out and combined into one. And the token is approximately four, four characters. So the limitation here is, if I were to take this big chunk of text all the way down to the end, it will not summarize that okay boom to token limit exceeded all right so there's a couple different things we can do we're a microsoft partner we have access to gpt 34 32k it's a much larger context window and let's pop that in now this may work that might have been right up to the to the Edge, so actually you can see here, this is very powerful. So we have access to the GPT-4 GPT 32K, which is a 32,000 character context window. That gives you a much, much bigger window to, uh, to put in and get out. And super powerful, but much more expensive. I think it's, I think that uh, response may have cost up to a dollar or two for that whole sequence right there that I just did in, in, in credits. It's six cents per thousand tokens. So maybe it was like 50 cents for this, uh, for this input output sequence here. So it's actually rather ex it's expensive. I suspect that that's gonna go down. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of talk about summarizing very, 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 very lengthy documents. That's not supported without some programming or third-party services to to do okay so if you go over if you go you know longer than the 32,000 window what you do is you basically you you chunk up the document and then you could ask for summaries over that and then ask for and then basically break it down and condense it down and then what also you'll see a lot of is systems that will be able to do Q and A over your over the documents, right? So you could ask basically what the Q and A systems do are take chunks of the documents to break it up, and they 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 create these things called embeddings, which are vectorized representations of the meanings of that chunk. So imagine you have a you know a forty page document, it will take chunks of that document and turn it into its meaning. And then through this thing called embeddings, basically when you ask a question, it will find s content that has similar meaning to the question you're asking, grab that content and give you a, a summary over those documents. It's very, very powerful. It is exactly what's being done in a lot of corporate settings right now for internal document search and Q&A capabilities. But if you just wanted the simple, if you just wanted summarization, the key takeaways over a large corpus of text, it takes some programming work and there's a little bit of art to it at, at this moment. But if you have, if you have content that fits within this 32,000 uh, character content window, if you have it and it's economically viable, you can summarize it. Otherwise, you have to chunk down and and call the the eight that the 8,000 character. Uh, GPT-4 window. You can use some of the small, the smaller models, the older models, but they even have. They're much, much cheaper. But they're, the context window and how much you can summarize is is sm smaller. Um, I'll just leave it off that. I had actually a friend that's an executive someplace, and they had a firm come in and try to do a summary of a very lengthy public document. And they said it only caught the end of the document. And I said immediately, I didn't want to put them too much on the spot. I just said, you know. 
it's probably the firm that was getting the getting it wrong on how they were actually doing the work. So there's 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 best practices now how to do that kind of work. Um, actually, I believe that Box.com just came out with the ability to do that over the documents. I'd have to look a little closer. They just released their Box AI, and Microsoft absolutely is going to have this kind of capability built into their products when they when they launch the the. Well, I shouldn't say absolutely. It's definitely highly likely that Microsoft will have this built into the O365 platform with their upcoming Microsoft Copilot. So that's version one uh, of this how to create value with AI. For my executive friends that have not gone into the weeds hardcore like us technologists, I'm hoping that this series is useful to you, that you can get a mental model of what the capabilities are. So when you go into work and you're in your day to day, like going around thinking, where would it be great to get the key takeaways in any part of our process? Where would it make us faster? The big lift for me is making better decisions. Um, you know, any of anybody that's an executive knows how important this great decisions are. Imagine empowering all of your people to be better decision makers and also making them better decision makers and faster. That's the big, that's the big win. So hopefully this was useful. If you see this on YouTube or LinkedIn or anything like that, please drop a comment below. Tell me, and I'm going to keep pushing these out. And thanks so much for spending your time with me.